Welcome back. I'm very excited for this lesson because we are going to put together everything that we have learned so far and the things are going to be very interesting. So once again, if you have missed any of these lessons, I recommend you to watch them before you continue. Let's begin. Standard deviation is a measure of the amount of variation or spread in a set of values. Suppose this is the actual measurement of 30 parts from a process, then standard deviation can be calculated using this formula. Seems complicated, right? Let me explain. N is the number of data points, that is 30. Mu is the average or mean value of all the 30 numbers and can be calculated by dividing the sum of all data points by 30, which comes out to be 60. Now first, we will calculate the difference of each data point from the mean and square the result of each outcome. Mean of these values is called variance and the standard deviation is the square root of variance. Now comes the interesting part. We have seen that the curve represents a process. Let's add some numbers to it. Mean represents center of the curve. That is, my process is set at 60 mm and it is making parts within this range due to its natural variation. Now, if I apply plus minus one standard deviation or sigma to the mean, it will cover 68.2% of the total area under the curve. That means there is a probability that 68.2% of the total parts produced with this process are going to be within 50 and 70. That's right. Area under the curve equals to probability percentage. In the same way, with plus minus 2 sigma, the total area covered for the parts between 40 and 80 will be 95.5%. And for plus minus 3 sigma, it will become 99.7%. That means, in any normal process, there is a probability that 99.7% of the parts will lie within plus minus 3 sigma range. Hmm. Similarly, if I want to know what is the probability of making parts between 64 and 68, it will be equal to the area of this portion. This is amazing. With the help of just 30 parts, we have predicted the behavior of the process. So, if the customer needs part between 40 and 80, this process can be called as 2 sigma process and we may estimate that 95.5% parts will be okay and only 4.5% are going to be rejected. Actually, there's the catch. This process curve is based on 30 parts that were made in a single run. However, if I were to produce a million parts, variation may occur due to some common causes like operator change, material change, equipment maintenance condition. So, there are chances that more parts will fall out of the range. To account for this common cause variation, a concept of 1.5 sigma shift is introduced. That means, in this 2 sigma process where the probability percentage is 95.5%, I have to move the process location by 1.5 sigma to make adjustments for the common cause variation. And by doing so, my probability percentage between 40 and 80 drops to 69% and the defect ratio will be 31%. That's huge. Even for a 3 sigma process, the OK ratio will be 93.3% and defect ratio will still be 6.7%. The minimum acceptable level today is 4 sigma process where defect ratio is 0.62%. And now industries are targeting for 6 sigma process with defect ratio of 0.00034%. That is only 3.4 defects per million. See, 
With standard deviation, how easily we can identify if my process is capable to meet the customer requirement. This was a tough lesson. Take your time to understand this concept. We are going to explore more on the concept of process capability and performance in the next lesson. See you there.